Pod Native community, and welcome back to the Cubes, continuing 13 years of coverage of KubeCon and Cloud Native Con. My name is Savannah Peterson here, reporting for this special segment in Amsterdam and one of the homes of CNCF's events, but very excited to be bringing in the executive director of the big show and of the Cloud Native Foundation, Priyanka. Priyanka, it's always such a joy to get to share the stage with you. Thank you so much for taking time before Salt Lake City. Thank you so much for having me, Savannah. It's always a pleasure to join you on theCUBE. So this is going to be an exciting one. We are still celebrating 10 years of Kubernetes, huge milestone, starting to see adoption. We were talking about it a bit in Paris. Kubernetes is having its Linux moment. Are you still seeing this level of adoption and saturation and excitement that we were talking about in Paris? Absolutely. Uh, you said it very well. Kubernetes is having its Linux moment, and that's reflected in so much that is going on in the ecosystem. Everywhere you look at people building, for example, AI platforms, and the underpinning, always Kubernetes. Everywhere in overall, you know, large-scale distributed systems, they're all running on Kubernetes, and our growing co contributors, our growing community members, it all points to that direction. Um, one of the not so welcome benefits of becoming ubiquitous is that you attract sometimes the attention of uh, non-practicing entities or patent trolls, in other words. So that's something we have noticed as well in the cloud native ecosystem, and we, we're, we're prepared for it. Uh, this KubeCon, you'll hear a lot of conversation about how we are fighting patent trolls, how we have uh, gathered together as a community because no one can stop us when we do that. We're doing prior art contests. We're working with some specialists in the space uh, to, and the goal is to show to these people we're too strong to be intimidated, so go elsewhere. Or rather stop working, <laughs> do something else with your life. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though, because we've talked about it a lot. It's one of the reasons I know we've both been really passionate about this community. The open source community is different and the level of passion and commitment to shared resources, to shared platform. And, and also one of the things I know we're gonna talk about tonight is shared education within the community. So I'm not surprised to hear that you're all out there combating patent trolls. As a longtime veteran of the Valley, I can say that anytime they come for you though, it tells me that you're reaching a certain level of visibility and importance and adoption. I want to unpack a lot of what you just said, but to get us started, one of the things that I've noticed in the conversations we've had, specifically since I saw you last in Paris at KubeCon, is in every one of the dialogues we have about AI and ML, about the systems and tech stacks that the largest enterprises on earth, as well as startups, are leveraging to build upon this new technological wave, not necessarily new, but, but highly adopted right now, hyped technological wave, is everyone's using Kubernetes for AI. And I, I think it makes sense as a platform. I know you and I agree on this, but I'm very curious. Do you think that the newfound adoption and, and real hype curve moment that we're having with AI and ML is actually gonna propel Kubernetes adoption even further at the enterprise level? I absolutely think so. It's been so exciting to see this wave of AI ML potential use cases that came about with the, the launch of uh, generative AI products out there. And that's been wonderful, but what they really need is to prove themselves in the market, right? Uh, different enterprises of all kinds are excited by the possibilities of this technology, but how does it translate to user value, business results? And that's where you need something that is strong, resilient, tried and tested, and yet also flexible and adaptable, which feels like synonyms for Kubernetes. And you see this happening across where all the platform engineering teams in these organizations are being tapped to help extend the platform engineering to support AI workloads. They're just another kind of workload. And this, this is a very welcome thing because we have the expertise in this ecosystem, in this community of how do you build, deploy, and maintain at scale. And this workload needs it just like anybody else. Absolutely. And it's nice to see the merriment of the right 
tools coming along with the excitement. And, and, and I think people obsess over compute when we talk about AI, but it's beyond that. It doesn't matter if you can't spin up a cluster or launch an app. It doesn't matter how fast your processing is, if it doesn't have anywhere that provides utility. You also talked about something that I think has been a really big conversation since the last time we spoke, which is all about making AI real and realizing some of these projects. And I know this is something CNCF is very fluent in with so many different projects in different stages. It's all about making that impact real. When we when we chatted last time in Paris, you brought up a couple examples, Adidas, Aerobus, that were, were seeing the benefits already at scale of Kubernetes and I'm sure AI and ML. Are there any other fun examples that you've seen over the last six months since we chatted? Well, every day I hear of new stories, but I will say uh, Adobe and Intuit are two organizations that utilize cloud native technologies, Kubernetes, and other projects in ways I haven't seen others do. They are so future forward with how they've utilized the cloud native stack to build their AI ML platforms. And they are so ahead of the curve in getting value out of these new AI features. So I think they are two companies to be really looked at. Uh, Adobe actually recently released their uh, open source uh, journey report and user journey report with uh, CNCF. And I think everybody should look at it. They have over 5,000 contributions. They contribute. Yeah, I know. It's wow. so yeah. impressive. I know. Yeah, it's super impressive. impressive. Hundreds of projects. This is a very prolific company. And I think everybody can learn from them. So actually, one of the co-chairs for KubeCon, Cloud Native Con Salt Lake City, is Joseph Sandoval, who works at Adobe. So you'll see his uh, perspective and flair in a lot of the talks that are uh, selected for uh, this show. And the, the lens he brings to it is always, I go to KubeCons to inform my product roadmap, to inform how we're going to build the next best thing. And so that's what he wants to see. That's what he tends to select. And so you'll see that reflected in the show. Oh, I love that. That must make you feel really good when you hear someone like that at such a large and well-known company. Not, I mean, not that you need any more social proof, but really affirming the value of the different projects and technologies that come out of this community. I mean, that's super powerful. All right, you brought up KubeCon. We're previewing that. You and I have been to many of them, but... <laughs> As we know from the data from past events, it tends to be about 50% newcomers coming for the first time, in addition to our venerable OG Kubernetes community. What would you want them to know as they're packing their bags for Salt Lake? There are so many different ways to learn at KubeCon. There's going to be 10,000 people. There's multiple days of education. Give us a little overview. Sure. So for all the newcomers that are joining us, welcome. We're so excited to have you. And this conference is for you. It caters to you, just like it also caters to the OGs who are returning. And how am I saying both things at the same time? Well, because our programming makes sure there's something for everybody. So if you're a newcomer, I highly encourage you to look at the schedule that's been announced already. and. Um, and filter by level of expertise in uh, in that in the drop down so you can have beginner intermediate advanced like there are options there to be at the level that you're interested in also look at the various tracks so for example we have an experienced and advanced track if you are really deep into cloud native and you're like i just want the 401 the college level class look at that you know if you want to start afresh with things and get, get your hands dirty, we have some amazing tutorials. And these are also, again, broken down by categories such as connectivity or networking uh, or AIML or observability. So you can really choose your own adventure. I think all you got to do is invest time on the coupon website and the schedule. Like really go through it is my two cents to you and you will definitely see results. There's also going to be a lot of uh, information available about uh, certifications uh, related to the cloud native ecosystem. For any newcomer, I think they are essential as you, you make your way in this industry. So check out the uh, information booth. I think we're doing a lounge of sorts for uh, certs and training and, and arm yourself. 
It really, I, one of the things that has always struck me about the cloud native community in a way that I think is actually quite unique to other tech communities is you really meet people where they are on their journey. And that doesn't matter if you're someone in the enterprise trying to learn, a young developer who's very intrigued by this community or some of the project, or even there's a kid's day at yes. Stanford. Tell me about that. <laughs> So this was the brainchild of our governing board chair, Arun Gupta. And he suggested that, why don't we start, start them young? <laughs> and yes. And when they can learn the concepts, there's no reason you can't. I see you've got Fippy in the background of your shot there. I mean, there's a whole group of characters even there to, to teach people in a way that's more accessible. Absolutely. And it, you know, it, 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 uh, impacts so many different ways. One, of course, is starting kids young. We have the tutorials literally utilize the Scratch programming language, and it, it's you know meeting them where they are at. Uh, but also, a big priority for Kids Day is to support under uh, underrepresented and uh, you know children in the local region we're going. So this is our way of giving back to the community that we're going to be joining for a week to support them in their technology journeys and help children who may not necessarily have these opportunities on a day-to-day -day basis, get a taste of cloud native, get a taste of technology and open source. I love that. So if you're a parent in Salt Lake City watching this and you don't even know what Kubernetes is, that's okay. You can bring your kids to this event. There's wonderful teachers like Cassandra Chin, who I know we're both very impressed by every year, who will be there to help guide you through this journey, no matter the stage you're at. I think it's I think it's really special. One of the other things I want to talk about, because last time we were in Paris, 50-50 gender representation on the stage. You and I both know how rare that is being women in this world and how important it is for people to see that they're welcome and invited to join the conversation. I'm confident we'll see that kind of diversity on the stage in Salt Lake. But one of the other things that you and I actually haven't had too much time to talk about that I wanted to bring up tonight is all of the different working groups within the Cloud Native Foundation. So, so people can contribute over 220,000, I believe the latest data is, contributors. That's a lot. That's the population of most cities. It's very impressive. Contributing to these open source projects. But beyond that, there are a multitude of divisions of working groups that aren't just interest-based, but for example, we do a lot of work with the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group, which I find so compelling. We just celebrated Deaf Awareness Month last month and, and got to highlight some of the fabulous guests we've had on. What are some of the other working groups that you've been inspired by within the community? Yes, actually some of the folks involved with the Deaf and Hard of Hearing group have also started a new group called the BIPOC group, and that is for a different kind of underrepresented folks, right? And they've just started having meetings, putting collateral out there, and I'm I'm noticing a buzz that's very similar to what happened with the Deaf and Hard of Hearing group, because these folks know how to do it, right? And mm -hmm. so that's one that I'm super stoked by and inspired by, because this is what we need. We Bring people in all kinds. Like you said, 50% of attendees are new every time. These groups are how they find their, their cohorts, their, their, their pals, and they stick around. So that's been really nice. I also am very impressed by just how fast this community iterates and wants to innovate. And that's represented in all these working groups that have spun up or evolved to focus on AI ML workloads. So you batch working group has been around for a while, but lately it's been just fast and furious working so hard because with AI, you need to care more about stateful workloads. And then we have working group device management because you have different kinds of devices that are relevant when you are you know, using different uh, training, uh, doing training, fine tuning, and then inference. And so, it just, it came up as the need arose and it's people are working on it. So I highly encourage folks to check out a lot of the working groups that are new in, in this space because they're working on something cutting edge that you need to be interested in now to be ready for tomorrow. I couldn't agree more. And, and just in case folks haven't been involved with any of the working groups, I can say as an outsider, well, to a degree, a fellow nerd, but, <laughs> but, but I feel I've been so even personally welcomed into these conversations. And I think if you're a new community member or a curious future community member, 
it can be a little nerve wracking to go sit down at the lunch table for the first time. And I don't think there's a more welcoming group of people. You can ask any question, even the silly questions that you might be embarrassed to in a normal environment. And not only will people be kind and welcome you, but there's also an immense amount of documentation and resources that are available for anyone that's interested in learning about any of these projects, which is just, I mean, it, it's just really magic. I, I'm biased, but I think you are at the helm of one of the coolest communities in tech. And I think it's really special. Speaking of that, we'll be in the mountains in Salt Lake. Theme of the overarching week, scaling at new heights. But also, you've got some, exactly, yeah, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's give those heights and slow mountain for everybody. But I think this is very cool. There's three different themes for the days, as we were discussing. There's, there's mm -hmm. platform and AI, there's security, and then also the grand celebration of 10 years of Kubernetes. So how can folks, knowing that, navigate their choose their own adventure as they're looking at that schedule? Absolutely. So we started this theming about, um, I think Paris was the first one, if not Chicago, you know, things things moves really, move really fast. So I know it's within those last two that we started this. Uh, what we discovered was that by prioritizing a certain set of uh, talks uh, in a certain category every day on the keynote stage helped, helped guide a lot of the programming. So the first day being uh, platform engineering and AI platforms has helped us A, have bring in keynotes that are relevant to that. And I think it'll be really interesting uh, programming for everyone because it also shows how cloud native is powering AI even from a human perspective. So we have Ken Goldberg who is keynoting. She used to be SVP of Kubernetes engineering at Google, such, such an OG. And now she is SVP of engineering at uh, Corby, a key player in uh, the uh, GPU and uh, in the GPU distribution world. Then we have Aparna Sinha, who is uh, who was again, who doesn't know Aparna in the Kubernetes world, right? And <laughs> yeah, and this is like this is like for those just tuning into the community. Priyanka has just listed what I would consider the Kubernetes royalty. As far as the people who are part of the royal family, if you will, we throw Kelsey Hightower in there and a few others. But I mean, yeah. yes, so we've, the power players are there and you can meet them. Yes, and they are at the cutting edge today, just like they were 10 years ago when Cloud Native started, right? And Aparna is now SVP of AI platforms at Capital One. And she's going to talk about how they're building it, how Kubeflow, another project in CNCF, is so critical to uh, their data pipelines. And so it's, it's just mind blowing, but we could channel all of that information into day one and make it that much more impactful. And you'll see a lot of side programming such as table topics at lunches that mirror the theme. The second day being about security, we know security just keeps getting more and more important, right? As it gets harder and harder. And so right. yeah. right, that's, that's the situation we find ourselves in. And so we need a day focused on that so that again, we can all get our energy together, really absorb, and then hopefully gain the most out of KubeCon on that topic. And then of course, we're gonna be celebrating. This is the last leg of the celebration for 10 years of Kubernetes, <laughs> have fun. There's gonna be some really fun stuff on stage. There's like a family feud style show happening. Yeah. Whoa, so, I come from a family of game show players and you had not revealed that secret to me before we started broadcasting this. So Andrew production team, we're going to have to make sure that I am able to go check out the family feud game. We're going to have to schedule a break during that time period because that yeah. sounds super fun. And, and there are so many people that have helped build this and, and, and make it really the technology platform of the future, which it could have been anything five years ago. And I, I think there's something really, I don't know, there's something really magical about the moment that we're having. I feel very lucky to be able to share it with you. You've got 26 graduated projects, 37 incubating, and 126 in the sandbox. That's going to be their up-to-date stats that I have. There are so many different things that people can get involved in. I mean, there's no reason not to investigate, to come play with us. We're all a lot of fun, I promise, <laughs> that, that we'll welcome you into this. So I got to ask, and I know you probably can't tell us too many secrets about it, but you historically give one of the coolest demos 
at KubeCon. Can you give us a little bit of a hint of what we might get in Salt Lake City? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, what can I say? Let me think. What I can tell you is that the opening day keynote will show how strong this cloud native ecosystem is and how we are going to win any issues with NPEs. So you'll see how you find that out. You know, you'll see how that manifests itself. But that's that's what's going to happen on day one. Okay, that was that was a little coy, but also <laughs> but also very powerful. And and I am I am really excited. I'm sure you're going to be telling us a little bit more about those patent trolls. Actually, I want to ask you one more question on that because I do think it's really interesting. We have not talked about this before in our this is now our fifth or sixth keep kind of working together. You mentioned you teased a couple of those in our opening segment, but how exactly is this open source community coming together to combat this? Because this is a huge problem in technology in general. This can stifle innovation in ways that you never anticipate when you embark on, on any sort of technological endeavor. Yes, absolutely. I think so. This is where it's really beneficial that see, cloud native is under the auspices of Linux Foundation. Linux truly has gone through all of these things, right? And mm -hmm. what we have benefited from is that we now know of folks in the world that are out there who can truly combat problems like this. So there is uh, the Open Innovation Network. There is Unified Patents. These are a couple of organizations that work closely with LF and now CNCF to you know, uh, invalidate patents uh, in uh, to deter the acquisition of patent troll portfolios. There are like, you know, there are two sides of the puzzle. One is like reducing how they get these patents. And then the second is invalidating them when they try to claim infringement. And so both sides are, Linux has already dealt with this and has lessons for us to learn. And so that's where um, that's where we've benefited and what we are leveraging. What we are also able to do is harness the power of our community. So there's going to be a prior art contest so that we all come together and collect all that information that makes it easier to, buy or, uh, to fight this stuff. And this will be an ongoing thing for Cloud Native. And it's very important just because we won't let anyone, anyone cast a shadow in our ecosystem ever. And I know it's going to be, I don't want to say quick, but it's going to be impactful and decisive the stance the community takes because we just don't we won't tolerate it and kubecon is cncf's avenue to really bring everyone together get the word out and then the ducks will fall in a row and we'll go from there to your point of why we haven't talked about this let's say in the past five years it's because i think of this year as truly the year we have matured into the linux moment of kubernetes so these problems become bigger and more real but i also want to say this is not a moment of fear. This is not a moment of trepidation. But as you said, it's a moment of realization that we are truly reaching ubiquitous stand levels, and this is, this comes with the comes with the territory, so to speak. It does. You know, as you're talking, it reminds me a bit around when Apple first launched their computers versus traditional PCs. And there weren't many viruses for Apple computers because they didn't have the market saturation. The TAM was so much smaller than it is. Yeah. And now, of course, it's totally ubiquitous. Security obviously affects everything from our edge devices yes. to our computers. But what you just described is essentially a true moment of market relevance. When if all of a sudden you've caught the attention of the trolls, it means that you are entering the arena where everyone wants a piece. And I love that you talk about the community. You gotta get the guns up. You know, you're, we're stronger together, baby, let's yeah. go. <laughs> and I will say there's something really inspiring about the open source community. They've always fought for access and, and knowledge and shared tools for everyone. So it's no surprise that they're turning around and doing the exact same thing when it comes to fighting patent trolls. I'm sitting here looking at my notebook. I'm still OG who uses a paper notebook and I do it <laughs> largely for prior art. I was trained back in the day where if you didn't have it in your notebook and dated, you couldn't necessarily ascertain that you would come up with something early on. And so I love that you're doing a prior art competition. I think it's really important for those community members to, to understand that world and to understand that they can have they can play a real role within that and help fight the good fight, which I think is awesome. 
Wow. Okay. So we have just had a rad conversation. I could talk to you for seven hours. We gotta stop. We gotta stop scheduling these for a short period of time so we can really dig in. We, <laughs> we gotta have like Priyanka and Sav chat for an hour just about the whole state of the ecosystem. Because I have yes. a million other questions for you. <laughs> but we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out in Salt Lake. But I do want to leave you with the opportunity to well, actually. I, ha- I have one. I have two more questions for you. Your son Axel is 17 months old. Axel has <laughs> also been to KubeCon, which is yeah. amazing. How long before we see Axel in Kids Day? <laughs> well, tomorrow if I could have my way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but my hope, genuinely speaking, is maybe next year. I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Well, I think so. I mean, we know that Cassandra's been teaching since she was 12. So there's no reason that, that Axel couldn't be there. And I can't wait. Maybe that'll be London. Where, wherever we're going next, I think I think that'll be awesome. All right. Last question for you so that we can get a really great soundbite for the sizzle. If you could tell someone on the fence about joining us in Salt Lake, and I like to think this entire interview would have already convinced them because we have too much fun and this community is amazing. But if you could tell them one thing to get them to join us, what would you say? Do you want your business, your career, your technology to scale new heights? If you do, you have to show up at KubeCon Cloud NativeCon in Salt Lake City. There it is, Priyanka. I couldn't have said it better. That was a perfect close. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here just 27 days before the kickoff of KubeCon. You're the best. I I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's always so much fun talking to you, Savannah. You truly represent the warmth and ethos of this community. Hmm. Oh, I, I, I cherish you saying that. Coming from you, that really that should actually be the thumbnail, guys. Get us doing the hearts to each other. That was perfect. <laughs> Priyanka, Executive Director of CNCF, you are the absolute best. To our community, if you're out there thinking about joining us in Salt Lake City for KubeCon, please come. It will be fun. You can learn. It is not a scary environment. I personally will welcome you with a big hug or a high five, depending on your, your personal preferences. I know Priyanka will do the same as well as the 300 speakers and sessions that are going to be happening, 200 sponsors, 10,000 people going, all representing the 220,000 members of the CNCF open source community. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special broadcast of The Cube after dark here in Amsterdam with Priyanka in the wonderful sunshine of San Francisco. We look forward to seeing you at KubeCon. My name is Savannah Peterson. Thanks for tuning into The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.